This program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayers, inquiry, and partnership, contact us on 0800-000-898 or send a text to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you. Shalom and greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank the Lord for this great opportunity that he has given us to once again meet here, the man in Christ show, that we may learn and look at the things that Christ has done for us, that our eyes will be opened to whom we are in him. And I am joined once again by my teacher in the School of Ministry and my friend, uh, Dr. Juma, I give him an opportunity to greet us, then we'll continue from there. Thank you very much for this opportunity that we have together to share the word of God. I'm so much blessed to be here. I know that as you continue listening, there's something that you are going to get. As uh, Pastor said, my name's uh, Dr. Juma, currently uh, Professor Juma. Thank you. Amen. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we continue, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so much grateful for this privilege you have given unto us to share in your word. We pray that you lead us by your spirit, open our eyes of understanding. Help us to reach to your people by giving us clarity in the things that we are discussing today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the man in Christ show. Our everyday verse is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 17. I love the old King James version. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. And it tells us that the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It is important for us to know whom we are in him, what has happened to us. If we fail to realize that, then it will be difficult for us to perform the things that we are supposed to perform or to do the things that we are left to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in our today's discussion, we have got this uh, a very important assignment that was left to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, the making of disciples the making of disciples. And if we can start from the scriptures in the book of Matthew, chapter number 28 and verse 18, verse 18, he says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Even to the end of age. Now, before we come to that, I would also like uh, uh, to join that with Second Timothy chapter number 2, verse 2. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Who will be able to teach others also. Apostle Paul talking to his son, uh, Timothy, he tells him of things that Timothy has heard from his father in the spirit, Apostle Paul. And he tells him those things, then commit them to other faithful men. Commit them to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Doctor, yes. it means here uh, that uh, if, even, if you, even when you look at what Jesus told us or told the disciples, yeah. make disciples of me. Yes. From all nations, baptizing them. And then he says, teaching them. So even before we start, uh, if you can uh, perhaps explain to us more 
that discipleship what does it entail what does it involve who is a disciple if we can start from there okay thank you pastor mm. um you see when we talk about discipleship yeah we are talking about mentorship yes and uh, if you look at the ministry of jesus himself yeah he appointed 12 disciples yeah and he walked with them for three and a half years. Yes. That means uh, as he walked with them, he was teaching them, he was showing them, mm. not just a question of teaching, but also showing showing, uh, showing them what he was doing. That's why he was with them 24-7, showing yeah. them that this is how it is done. Mm. This is how you can uh, cast out demons. Yes. This is how you can be able to handle preaching in a crusade. Yeah. This is how you can be able to handle uh, teaching maybe in a, in a house. Mm. And so these people were with him 24 7 yeah and and if you look at uh, jesus christ he's the school of jesus actually he had like his own school of discipleship mm. and these 12 were the ones that he started with mm. but uh, later maybe as we discuss you'll see that uh, after this 12 mm. this 12 impacted the other 72 and it continued until yeah. it reached to us yeah. so what i can say is that discipleship to me is mentorship yeah and when it comes to the issue of mentorship mm. is that you must be able to mentor the person and behave or have the impartation of what you have yeah. it's like uh, giving the person what you actually have yeah yes so mm. it, it yes. involves giving instructions exactly or precepts to yes. be followed to be followed yes so that that person that you are mentoring yes. or you are discipling yeah can be able to do the things that you are showing them yes. can be able to do the things that you yourself as the teacher you are yeah. doing yes because you see now you, you can't be a mentor or mm. you can't be a discipler mm. if you yourself uh, is having a different kind of attitude or opinion or mm. whatever yeah. it's like the person that is being discipled mm. the disciple himself must follow you yeah. and follow exactly the way that you are doing things mm. and that's why you have to be with him uh, to guide him to show him and some some of the times after you've shown him and you let him also do it yeah uh, uh, under your supervision under your supervision and so that that now makes the person to be able to know that this is the way to follow yeah. step by step precept by precept yeah yes so mm. it involves in um in a in, in other words it yeah. involves uh, the teacher here or the master here yes reproducing himself exactly in the people is discipling exactly actually uh, a good disciple you know that somebody has been discipled properly mm. when you see the, the disciple behaving the same way as the disciple yesterday i don't know whether it's yesterday or the day before yesterday uh, i was looking at a, a video yeah uh, of bishop mutua yeah the 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 father to bishop Lai. yeah and I, all, I actually laughed because the way he was jumping and dancing yeah. is exactly the same way our father does. And so, <laughs> yeah. and so I saw the, 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 that the father, the, the, the son was actually discipled properly yeah. with the father. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, um, still in that area, yeah. uh, before we come to Apostle Paul, uh, I'd like us to look at some other scriptures that will emphasize that mark 16 and verse 15 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature preach the gospel to every creature Preacher. he who mm. believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned again look at uh, luke 24 Luke 24, 46. Uh -huh. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all uh, in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things you are the witnesses of these things i just want to capture uh, some things that were are written in the gospels Le, uh, john 20 verse 20 that and truly jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing you may have life 
in his name. Now, there is this thing that Jesus told the disciples. Uh -huh. uh, when you look from the account of Luke, the account of Mark, the account of uh, John, uh, there is this thing that they had to do. Mm -hmm. One is to believe. Yes. To believe in Jesus Christ. Remember I said, make disciples of me, yeah. not of ourselves. Yeah. In other words, if we are going to be involved in discipling or mm -hmm. making disciples, they must be the disciples of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the product should look like Jesus, Jesus Christ. Mm. But then he put this thing, them that will believe. Yeah. So you cannot become a disciple of Jesus if first of all you have not believed yeah. in the Lord. Yes. Mm. You cannot because uh, the, that is the beginning of salvation. That is the beginning. Because it be, starts by believing. Yeah. You must believe in him and uh, trust that he is the Lord of your life. Mm. He is Lord over you. Yeah. You believe in him. That's how you can now be disciple to follow him. Because mm. uh, if you don't believe in anybody, yeah. it becomes very difficult even to uh, to 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 uh, to accept his word, mm. even to accept whatever he's saying. But when you believe in him, believing is like you have given yourself to him. Yeah. So then that means now he can follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Just like a marriage relationship, mm. the woman cannot come to you unless he believes in you. Yeah. Because he's ready to leave his own home to come and live with you. That means he believes. In this, in this person. Yeah, he knows mm. that this person cannot harm me. This person means good. Mm. This person is able to keep me, is able to feed me, is able to do all that mm. I pertain in the life. Yeah. Yes. Mm. This is the reason why Jesus had to arrest or unbelief. Yes. Remember when he rose from the dead? Yeah. Many of his disciples were not believing. Yes. Thomas said, I'm not into that. I must put my hands <laughs> where where the yeah. nails went through yes. and all that. Yes. And when Jesus came, he let mm. him do it. Yes. He had to handle and believe. Yes. Because I believe this is the starting point. Yes. You believe in him. Yes. Then you enter into discipleship. Into discipleship. Mm. Because that, that actually, as you say, that is the, the, the entrance yeah. for discipleship. Yeah. You start by believing, or in other words, we call it salvation. Mm. Once you give your lives to Jesus, then now you are... And you see, uh, pastor, discipleship is also in levels. Yeah. So you start at... It's just like school. Just like because school. Because discipleship is a school. Mm. You might not enter today... And be uh, you be somebody that has been discipled <coughs> to the level of the discipler. Yes. Because uh, the ultimate goal is that he, the discipler may uh, may reproduce himself. Yeah. So it takes time. Slowly by slowly, you start changing, and your behavior start changing, mm. your character start changing. Yeah. You start looking more like him. Yeah. So it takes time. It takes but, time. But the, the 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 starting end is just like when you take a child to school in grade one. That mm. is salvation. Yeah. Or believing. Yeah. And so the moment you believe, then you've started the journey of discipleship. Yeah. Yes. So Jesus commanded the disciples to do three things. Yes. Yeah, when, when you read uh, Matthew 28, mm -hmm. especially 19 and 20. Yes. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. Three things here he's talking about. Yes. Make disciples. Yeah. Baptize yes. them. And he says, uh, teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Exactly. Make disciples, baptize mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and teach them. Yes. So, as you have said, uh, becoming a disciple is a process. Yes. Is a process. Yeah. And we should, or, or one cannot uh, become a full disciple by skipping some of the processes. Exactly. For example, you cannot become a disciple if you are not taught. Yes. And you are not taught just anything one wishes to no, teach. No, no, Jesus exactly. gave them yeah. the things that yeah. I have yeah. taught so, you. Yes. So he was very particular. It was, yeah, it's like he gave him a curriculum. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it is not like... Um, because the disciples we have said must be yes. after Jesus. Yes. Must look like Jesus. Like you remember Jesus. the yeah. uh, the church in Antioch mm. where Apostle Paul and Barnabas were. Yeah. And 
they taught the church for one year yeah. and the people said these are Christians, Christians. or they are Christ like yeah Christ like uh, yeah that means it was a church that had been well taught discipled, yeah. well discipled yeah and they were changed their lives were changed yeah and people could see these ones they are like Jesus they're Christ like Jesus exactly because you see mm. even here in this scripture that he's saying go therefore yeah. and make disciples which is the first point we are talking about yeah. when Jesus is talking about making disciples mm. he knew very well that people will get saved yeah. and once people will get saved mm. they have to be made they have to be go, made yeah because if they are not made then that mm. means we might still lose them yeah. because they will not be disciples they not be disciples. that means they will not be followers of Christ yeah. because discipleship is following yeah. Yeah. And if they will not be able to follow Christ, that even salvation will not be beneficial to them. Yeah. Even the believing will not be beneficial to them. There are people who have believed. They have be, even the devil believed. That's what the Bible says. Mm. He believes and he trembles. Yeah. But then when you believe, you must go past just believing. Yeah. Yes. So mm. every disciple yeah. must be taught. Yes. Yes. Uh, Every disciple, you know, in the area of teaching, you yourself yeah. are a teacher. Yes. In the area of teaching, that means mm. there must be obedience to the disciple. Yes. When you are told this is the way to do it. You have, to, yeah. You must show obedience to the things that you are being taught. Exactly. Mm. And you see, when it comes to the area of teaching, mm. you just don't teach anything. Yeah. There, there must be a specific curriculum mm. or a specific uh, kind of a uh, outline uh, that you are supposed to, teach, supposed to teach step by step mm. because you cannot uh, believe today mm. and we start teaching you to eat strong meat yeah. as the bible put it yeah. but you, you they'll start you you get saved by water then they start by feeding you milk yeah. uh, and after they feed you milk then they, they they'll feed you now meat yeah. and then they feed you strong meat so it's yeah. it's, it's a process mm. you you cannot just uh, be taught from any level yeah. there's a space, there's a way that people must be taught and that's why sometimes i reason that uh, if we all are medical doctors, for example, mm. you trained in University A, yeah. and me, I trained in U University B, mm. and you all become maybe gynecologists, for yeah. example. Mm. So if we go to do an operation, or if we go, or we are all surgeons, we go to do an operation, it means that whatever you know and whatever I know must be the same. Must be the same. So if we are going for that uh, operation, mm. we should be able to do the same thing. Mm. We should be able to communicate yeah. during the operation, isn't it? Yeah. So if a disciple, uh, if somebody is discipled here in Mombasa, mm. another person is discipled in Nairobi, another person is discipled maybe in Machakos, yeah. these people should be, have the same characteristic mm. because the curriculum is that all of us wants to be like Christ or mm. should be like should be like Christ. Christ yes. Mm. So I don't think that if somebody is discipled mm. to be like Apostle Paul, mm. then I think that's a wrong curriculum. That's a wrong curriculum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we should just be disciples that all of us at the end of the day will be manifesting Christ. Will be manifesting yeah, Christ. So, 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 so the curriculum the way you are putting it, when we are being taught, the curriculum should be the same and it should be accenting in the same order. The same order. Yes. And that means the teachers must be careful because you yes. remember also there are false teachers. Of course, there are, there are so uh, many of so them. So they are making false <laughs> yeah, disciples. False disciples. And that's the biggest problem that we have in the Christian movement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the teachers, what they are teaching, yes. the, the people who are discipling others, mm. they must be sure they are following the, 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 correct, the curriculum, correct curriculum, yes. teaching the right thing. Teaching the right uh, thing. We are getting back to where Apostle Paul is saying the from, things from, that from, I have, yes. you have received from me. Yes. Uh, but before that, also on the side of the of the disciple himself, Yes. look at First John chapter number 2. First John. Yeah, chapter number 2 and verse 3. Yes. He says, Now, by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. commandments. Now, remember we have said that yeah. one is taught or one is discipled. Yeah. So he must receive the teaching. Yeah. He must receive the teaching. And now this is how we know that you have known Jesus. Because yes. at the end of the day, it should be that you become like him. You yes. become like him. Mm. Or you do things like him. Yeah. So it says, John, here, by this we know that we know him if we keep his, his commandments. commandments. Yes. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, mm. and the truth it's is not, not in, in him. him. Mm -hmm. 
but whoever keeps his word truly Abides. the love of god is perfected in him by this we know that we are in him we know him yeah we are in him yes he who says he abides in him yeah ought himself also to walk mm. just as he, he walked. walked amen just as he walked mm. now this is important because uh, the ultimate goal yeah is for everyone to be like, like him. him yes you cannot be like him yeah. if you don't know him yes but then john gives us the parameters yeah this is how we are going to know no. that you have known jesus yes keep his commandments yes love yes all that all those that is are there all, all that he has commanded us to do yes do it yeah. by that we know no, that you are like him yes. that that you have known him exactly then he says if you are not going to do that mm. you are a liar mm. you might say i'm a disciple of jesus i'm mm. a follower of jesus, jesus. But if you are not walking in the pattern of Jesus, Jesus in the yeah. things of Jesus, yeah. and you have been taught yeah. it is something you know you should be doing, yes. you are not doing, yeah. he says you are a liar. Mm. Then he says, if we keep his word, mm. the love of God is perfected in us. So there's perfection. Yeah. And he says, by this we know that we are in him. Yes. When you see that perfection of love. Mm. But if anyone says that he abides in the Lord, yes. You abide in Jesus. Yeah. You yourself. This is the parameter. Yeah. You ought to walk just as he walked. walked yes. Exactly. Because you see, in teaching mm. or in the process of discipleship, as we have said, it's a process. Yeah. There are those yardsticks that are put, mm. and we could be able. We can be able to measure. Yeah. Uh, those levels where the disciples is passing through to know mm. has he really attained the level that is required yeah. just like in the normal teaching we uh, me i teach in the university mm. when you teach a class for a certain subject mm. you find that uh, you the university demands that you give them at least two continuous assessment tests mm. and uh, they call them cuts mm. and so you would be able to know if they do cut one mm. or continuous assessment test one mm. you can be able to get ga uh, to gauge your students yeah. how far they are yeah. are they understanding what we're teaching them mm. because if you see they are failing even in your, in your first cut mm. then you either change your way of teaching or uh, you have to interrogate and know what is it that is not happening mm. before even you continue teaching and give them cut to. Mm. So you'll be able to know in between there that there is something that is not working or something. And if they are performing well, then you know that something's up. And, and I like the way Paul is put, the way John is putting it here, mm. that the, 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 the yardstick here is to obey the commandments. Mm. And if somebody is obeying the commandment, he is walking in love, mm. he's walking in faith, mm. he's walking in is a prayerful person, mm. he's walking the he's following the steps of Jesus, mm. then you can be able to know that this is becoming a real disciple. disciple. Yes. Yeah. We have said that a disciple must be taught. That means they should be obedient to the things that they have been taught. John he's saying that by this we know that you know the Lord when you obey his commandments. So a disciple should not be the one who is choosing what to obey and what not to obey. If, if you are a true disciple, you are not going to be the kind that will be obedient today and tomorrow you are disobedient. So our hearts must be, uh, must be humbled or we must bring ourselves to the place of being taught. Now you cannot be taught if you know everything, even more than the teacher. If the teacher has got nothing to tell you, if the teacher has got nothing to instill to you, no direction to give you, that means you are not going to be a, 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 a disciple under that teacher. But then this should be your attitude, that you are ready to learn, that you are able to obey, that you are able to follow. And this will take us to the book of Acts of Apostles 22 and verse number 8. Jesus uh, uh, met with uh, uh, Saul at that time. His name is Saul. Later on, he, he changes to Paul. But here, Apostle Paul is giving that account or is narrating that account. In verse 8, he says, So I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. 
They did not hear the instructions. They did not hear Jesus speak. But Jesus was speaking to Saul. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, arise and go into Damascus. And there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. Go to the city. And there you'll be told all things mm. which are appointed for you to do. to do. Now, I get three things here in verse mm. 8. Yeah. Saul is asking, who are you, Lord? Yeah. You see, you cannot become a disciple of someone you do not know. Exactly. So if you are to follow Jesus, yeah. then you should be aware that I am following Jesus yes, or I'm yes. becoming a disciple of, of Jesus, Jesus yes. or I'm being prepared yeah. for the work of the Lord. Yes. You cannot be a confused disciple no. or with no understanding. Mm. In verse 9, he says there were people that were with him, mm. but they were not party to what was being discussed. Mm. They, they, did not, they did not hear the voice of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that means we can be together, but not all of us are being discipled True. for different reasons. Yes. But you can be amongst a group mm. uh, of people, but all of you are not disciples. Yeah. Uh, that means it is good for one to, to, to be aware yeah. that uh, even though I'm in this church, mm. a big community maybe, yes. a big community, Mm. Not everybody in that congregation is a disciple. No. So not everybody mm. in that congregation should be your example. Yes. I, and that's very true, Pastor, because uh, just in the no, just like in the normal classroom, yeah. students are being taught. Yeah. And when the exams are brought, yes. some emerges number one. Yeah. Others emerges the last. Yes. Others are in the middle. Mm. And they have been subjected to the same teachers. The same syllabus, yes. The same everything. The same everything. Uh, there, there's no one that is disadvantaged over the other. Mm. But at the end of the day, you find that there's one who will still emerge a winner, yeah, or one who will emerge uh, number one. The top. So similarly in the church or in the class of discipleship, yeah, you find that all depends on how deep mm. you are convinced or how deep you believe yeah. or, or your attitude towards the teacher also mm. really matters. Yeah. Are you really, uh, how do you desire to be like Christ? Yeah. How, how is the level of your desire? Yeah. Are you so hungry? Jesus said that those who are, who are thirsty, let them come and they'll drink. Yeah. So the, it depends on the thirst. I think that's the right word. Mm. How thirsty are you? How thirsty are you? Uh, uh, yeah, to, to be like Christ. Mm. Because the more thirstier you are, the, the faster you will be able to learn, the faster you will be able to follow, the faster you will be able to implement what is being taught. And you'll find that now you will be able to grow over others. Mm. Because even if you look at... If you look at the disciples of Jesus, mm. there were others which were, were faster. Yeah. Not all of them wrote books. Yeah. There were 12. Mm. But I don't think each and every uh, disciple of Jesus yeah. wrote a, a, a chapter in the Bible. Mm. But the others who wrote, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul wrote even much, despite the fact that he was not part of the discipleship. Mm. So the, the thirst level here really matters. Yeah. yeah. As a disciple, how thirsty are you? to be as closer or uh, to be uh, to be reproduced as Christ. Yeah. Yes. And mm. talking of that last, you yes. look at verse 10. Yes. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? Lord? I think this should be the attitude of every disciple. Yes. What should I do? do. Yes. When it comes to prayer, yeah. how should, should I, I pray? Do. Remember the disciples of Jesus told him, mm. teach us how to pray. Yes. That is a, a hunger and a thirst in them. <laughs> in them, yes. They what shall I do? Yeah. Now, but look at Jesus' reply. Yeah. He said, arise, go into Damascus, mm. and there you'll be told all things which That's are appointed for you to, to do. do. Mm. Again, you come back to, um, to the process. Yeah. Jesus had the opportunity to tell Apostle Paul yeah. everything that he needed to tell him. Yes. But then he tells him, go to the city. Yes. When you get into the city, yeah. I have appointed someone there yeah. who will tell you all what you must do. Yeah, it is very important. <laughs> yes. It is very important. Mm. So he says, what should I do? Yes. What should I do? Mm. Because uh, if if that is not in the in the in the in the in the in the heart of the disciple. Oh, yes. 
that you are you are ready to learn you are ready to be taught yes that means that uh, a lot of things will bypass you very that at the end of the day you will not become a true disciple yeah very true because you, it is not just becoming a disciple yeah you must be a true disciple people true, should look at you yeah and recognize and yeah and see Christ in you. you yes. Mm. And realize that you are not like everybody else. Exactly. In the workplace, yeah. they say, this man is born again. Yes. Just like Daniel. They yeah. knew he yes. feared God. He feared God. They couldn't mm. get him in another thing. Yes. Not in corruption. Not in sin. Anything else. Not, yes. mm. not in uh, all worldly things. Yeah. And actually, and, well, uh, Pastor, when, when you see a true disciple, mm. you'll be able to know. Yeah. Because uh, the conduct the behavior everything that somebody mm. does even yeah. the way he talks yeah. you know that this is a true disciple this is a true disciple uh, because if you are like Christ mm. we people know what Christ yeah. was mm. and so they'll measure you against that because Christ is our yardstick yeah. and so they'll be able to see your conduct they'll be able to see how you carry yourself how you handle yourself yeah. and even if you are you are disciple and mm. you have not reached that level yeah. people will also know people will also know <laughs> yes yeah. that you are disciple but there's still something <laughs> lacking. <laughs> Look at Second Timothy chapter number one. Yes. Verse five. He says, mm. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, mm -hmm. which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you oh. also. I see a a reproduction sure, yes. of, of a pattern here. Very true. So the grandmother Lois had mm. this faith in the Lord. Yes. And that was imparted to, to, in the mother Eunice. Eunice yes. And now Eunice has yeah. done it to the son Timothy. Timothy. Yes. And Apostle Paul can see a continuation of that pattern. Yeah, that's what we call training of trainers. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so that means yeah. uh, Lois got it. Yeah. And uh, he became like Christ. Yeah. And he imparted it to the daughter, yeah. Eunice, yeah. also who became like Christ. Christ. And now they are imparting it to, to Timothy. Timothy. Mm. So, so, and, and that should be the pattern yes. in our churches today. Mm. So if we can be able to show that pattern, yeah. and we, we who God said maybe years ahead mm. can be able to impart it to those who follow, and those follows impart it to the other generation, so that the whole generation is imparted by, by Christ. And that would be very beautiful. So but the disciple it, making should be for everyone. It should be for everyone. Disciple someone. Yes. Teach someone to love the Lord. Yes. Teach someone to 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 do the work of God. Yes. Preach to somebody. Actually, uh, to be sincere, mm. you should be having your disciples. Yes. If you stand before God, mm. you should have your disciples following you. Yes. That people that you discipled. Yeah. And every other person who disciples have his own line. Yeah. So it's like everybody has people behind them. Yes. That they disciple. That they disciple. So it should be like a tree that is growing. That is growing. A big tree. It's, it's a multiplication process. Yes. Whereby I, I, I have my disciples. Uh, the like the uh, the GCC that we normally teach people, yes, yes, the yes. John, Peter, and whatever. Mm. So you find that Peter has his own disciple, uh, James has his own disciple, John has his, and so it mm. continues. The tree continues growing. Yeah, yeah, and it become a very large tree. Yes. Very true. Mm. So Apostle Paul uh, is encouraging his son here, Timothy. Yes. In verse eight, he says, "Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord." He's encouraging him to share. Yes. Do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Now, we'll come back to the sufferings. Yes. Uh, but look at verse 13. Mm. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ yes. Jesus. Mm. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. us. Mm. The pattern of sound words. Yes. And this he repeats again the second chapter where mm. you have read Second Timothy chapter two verse two. Yes. Yeah. The Those things, things that, that you have heard from me. Yes. That you commit it's them to other other, faith. other faithful men. Yes. And then they should be able to teach others. Yes. In other words, he's telling Timothy. Uh, when you read from chapter number one, yes, 
the grandmother did something to yeah. the mother, the mother did something to the son, yeah. and now is encouraging the son yeah. that you have a responsibility yes. to raise faithful men, men yeah. and bring them up to a level also of being uh, able to go and, 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 and disciple other and people. Other people. And if you look at the ministry of Jesus, mm. that's exactly what he did. Yeah. Because he chose 12, discipled them. Yes. And even as he, lay, he was living, mm. the 12 later on yeah. uh, discipled the 72. Yeah. And the 72 now continue until now, we all of us yeah. were discipled. All of us were because disciples. We, yes. So, so you find that uh, uh, discipleship, as you say, is, is, is a step <coughs> and it's a pattern. Mm. And it's a pattern that should be able to grow. Yeah. Uh, grow in any church, you should see that growth of discipleship yes in the in this starting from the the leadership mm. going down to the members of the of, of the church yeah and so people become, and you see the the beauty about discipleship is that once somebody is well discipled yeah and he's like christ mm. then he can now be able to do what christ did yeah. and do much more than what he did mm. and that's what christ says in john that uh, you will do more than what I did. Yeah. And so that's what we want for us to, because the, the issue here is that it's about the kingdom. Mm. We are trying to build up a kingdom. Yeah. And this kingdom should be built up by disciples. By disciples. Not just members, but yeah. disciples. But by disciples. Yeah. And they should go at every length to do yeah. that. Yes. Look at, uh, look at Acts 11. Mm. Look at what Barnabas did. Acts 11.25. Then Barnabas departed to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. Yes. And the disciples were first called Christians in, in Antioch. Antioch. Mm. Look at the dedication of these two men. Yeah. He goes gets uh, gets Saul. Yes. Brings him to Antioch. Yeah. They are there for a whole year. Yes. Assembling with the church. The church, yeah. And teaching the brethren there. Mm. And the Bible says that they taught a great many people. people yes. A lot of people were yeah. under their teachings. Mm. And they, 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 they were first called Christians in Antioch. Yeah. And this is very important because uh, uh, Sometimes we are in a hurry. You're yeah, very much in a hurry. We are in a hurry. Mm. Uh, even even from the pulpit, yeah. we, are, we, are, we are preaching like the sermon is ending <laughs> now and, and after that rapture is happening. <laughs> but we have a duty to instill yes. to the people. Yes. We have a duty to, to, to teach the people. Yes. Uh, so that you, you are rushing to go where? Yeah, yeah. nowhere. Because here yeah, in, in the case uh, where you have read in, uh, in verse 26, look yeah. at the timeline. Yeah. It was a whole year. A whole year. A whole year these people sat with these people mm. to be able to teach them. To be able, because it's not just a question of teaching. It's teaching and demonstrating. Yes. Because after you have taught... You take them for demonstration, demonstration, and they see what you are doing, yeah. and they start learning. Of course, there will be mistakes in the beginning. People will try and not maybe <coughs> succeed, and step by step, the way yeah. Christ did it, mm. uh, they'll be able now to start learning. Yeah. Because learning is a process that takes time. Yeah. And you find that during that time, there's a lot of mistakes that mm. are made. And so you as a discipler must be very patient. And that's why it requires a lot of time. Yeah. You must be very patient with your disciples because they'll make mistakes. Even the disciples of Jesus made several mistakes. Yeah. But Jesus kept with them mm. for three and a half years. He never got tired of them. He didn't say that uh, you have messed it. That's yes, the end God. of you. Uh, you are no longer my disciple, no. <laughs> he kept with them yeah. and continued despite the mistakes, despite the, the shortcomings, until they became like him. Until and they became even, like him. And actually, by the time he was leaving, these people are very powerful. Mm. They were very powerful and they turned around the world yeah. because of the patience that Christ had with them. So as you say, Pastor, it's very important that we be patient with our disciples. Very true. Sometimes in churches, we are more of preaching mm. and less of teaching. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, w I would say that if there would more teaching and even more uh, uh, clusters that are being taught mm. at different levels, because sometimes we just teach people at the point of salvation. Mm. And then once they've gone through maybe a certain curriculum, we assume yeah. that they have uh, 
they they are, they they are now disciples yeah. but, but I, me i think teaching is a lifetime yeah and discipleship is a lifetime kind of thing mm. you because there's no day that you say that now you have you have learned everything even paul when he was living mm. he said that he had not yet known christ very well yeah despite the mighty things that he had done he said that he's going but then there's still <coughs> some things to be done yeah true yes. mm. but and, and and look at these uh, uh these believers in antioch mm. It is after one year that now they are called Christians. Christians yes. They didn't start as Christians. No. So we can as well say uh, Christians are well-taught believers. Very true. But you see nowadays you ask someone, they tell mm. you I'm a Christian. Yeah. Not because they are Christ-like. Yeah. Not because they have been taught. It's because they have been given a name. <laughs> because they have been baptized or something. <laughs> yeah. Not, not even real baptism. Yeah. They are. They were just put under water. Or uh, they have yes. a. They have a name that they call Christian. Christian, name. yes. Mm. Um, or they find themselves that they are close to Christianity Christ, or something yes. like that. Yeah. yeah. And so they regard themselves as Christians. Christians. But Christians here mm. were taught believers in mm. Antioch. Yes. It is after one year yeah. when they had been taught yes. that now they, they said these are Christians. Christians. Because when we talk about, you see, there has been a lot of misconception mm. about a Christian. Yeah. And as you said, Christian is Christ-like. Mm. That, that's, the, that, that's the meaning. It's not a religion. It's not a religion. Yeah. But people have turned it into a religion. People mm. think that being a Christian is a certain religion. Yes, but yes. But it's not. It is not. It's actually being Christ-like. Yeah. Being Christ-like means having the character, the behavior, the, 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 the everything about Christ mm. can be seen in you. Yeah. And that's now when you qualify to be jo jo Christian. John told us, yes. if you know him, yes. you obey him. him. Yes. And you walk. Walk as, he a, a, as he walked. Now that one can be called a Christian. Then you qualify to be a Christian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very true. Mm, yeah. So, mm. uh, so Jesus is, uh, when he was living here, he told the disciples, mm. make disciples, mm. baptize, teach. Yes. In the book of Mark, he says, preach the gospel well, yeah. to every creature. Yeah. So, this disciple making, mm involves us sharing in the word of god, god yeah. and showing people from the word of god how they ought to live or yeah. the, the, uh, the 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 kind of life that they have to show forth yes so without preaching of the word yes. there can be no discipleship without preaching of the word there shall uh, there can be no discipleship but there's another angle here mm. that also when we need to explore, Pastor, yeah. because uh, if you are a, a true disciple mm. of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. your character, your behavior, your yes. conduct yeah. can even attract other people yeah. into wanting to be disciples. Yeah. Because they'll be, they'll be seeing uh, something mm. that, that is attractive, something mm. that uh, is good for this life. Mm. And so you find that even without teaching, you would attract others who would come so that they are taught. Yeah, I don't know whether you see that angle. Yes, yes. So, yes. so, so that that's why it's important that uh, we breed more of true disciples. Mm. Because by people looking at us, by people, even the people who are at Antioch, mm. when they saw, they saw Christ yeah. in those people, mm. and they wanted to be like them. Actually, in Acts, I think chapter four or five, there people wanted to join them because they were seeing something. That was very different from what they had seen before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Look at the book of Luke 14. Yes. And verse 25. Yeah. Now, great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my <laughs> disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross mm. and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, this is interesting here. Very interesting. Great multitudes, mm. they are following him. Yes. Jesus tells them, mm. uh, I have to measure this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have to measure this thing. And yes. I want us to keep this for for the for the next show okay uh, uh so that we see because one can be willing to follow yes but then you do not just come it is like a class yes, yes. it has got its own rules and regulations, regulations yeah uh, you cannot be a student uh, mm. who will be operating 
outside what is laid down for you. For, yeah. If you are a student it's, in this particular school of Jesus then, Christ, then you this is the way. Mm. And we'll be looking uh, from verse 26 yeah. and 27. But uh, I want you to, to, to address the viewers here. Um, someone to, to, to have this, this um, desire in them to be taught mm. and to realize that they have got no option if they are going to become true disciples of Jesus Christ. Yes. They have to be like him. Mm. John says, by this we know yeah. that you love him yes. if you obey his commandments. The, by this we know that you are in him if you walk just as he walks. Yes. So I want you to address the viewers here because every one of us should be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yes. But then there are yard six yeah. that have been put for us to measure ourselves and to know whether we are becoming true disciples or we are running our own race. race Either yeah. we have become the disciples of Jesus or, or disciples of men, men or yeah. of religion John, yes. or whatsoever thing. Yes, it's true. <coughs> Thank you very much, Pastor. It's true, uh, as we have been discussing about making discipleship, it's very important as a Christian mm. that first you, as an, as an individual, mm. you must be a disciple. Yes. But by being a disciple, it means that you have been mentored and you are in the process of becoming Christ-like. Mm. That is what it means to be a disciple. Mm. But you, on the other hand, you should also be discipling other people. Mm. Because at any stage in life, mm. you must be having somebody who is on top of you, mm. who is discipling you. Yeah. And you being in the middle, you should be having somebody behind you mm. whom you are discipling. Yeah. And of course, you should be having people at your peer whom you are also sharing and strengthening one another as disciples. Mm. And so you find that within your walk of faith, you will have somebody discipling you somebody you are discipling and some people that you are sharing the same level of discipleship and by doing so then you find that you are covered you are strong you are protected and you can be able to bear much fruit in this kingdom and yeah. that, that's what i would uh, like to say pastor for now yes yes yeah. yes mm. and for you who is not born again it starts by believing you do not jump ship and then you start becoming a disciple without first believing in the lord jesus christ it starts with salvation. So when you are born again, when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, then you get into the process of learning the things that you you must you must learn and 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 doing the things that you must continue doing as you become more and more of Him. So I want to give you this opportunity. You have not known Him as your Lord and as your Savior. You are not living for Jesus. You are not following His ways. And because that is the starting point, there is no need for you to be around disciples, around in a church and participating in the things of the church. Yet, yet it is all in vain or it will not count in the last day because you never knew the Lord. Remember, he said, men will come and say, we cast out demons in your name. These were religious people. They were involved in church activities, but they had no personal relationship with the Lord. So it starts with you first as an individual. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be born again. So I want to give you this opportunity by making this confession after me. You will be born again and then you start the journey of becoming a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just say after me, Lord Jesus, today is my day of salvation. I believe in you that you died on the cross you are buried and that, that day you rose from the dead and that you are the savior of men therefore lord i come unto you that you may forgive me of my sins make me a new creature and accept me in your kingdom by faith i receive the gift of salvation by confessing you as my lord and my savior in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Be bold to tell everyone that you are born again. Why? You have believed in the Lord Jesus. You have confessed him as your Lord and Savior. And for you to get into, uh, or for you to become a true disciple, you need to join yourself with other brethren where the word of the Lord is being taught. And I welcome you if you are in Mombasa or around Mombasa, you can join us to 
any of our centers in the south, in the west, in Buxton, in Bamburi, or any of our branch churches. Write to us through the numbers appearing on your screen. You can even make a call through the toll-free number that is appearing on your screen. And we'll be able and glad to receive you and to share with you uh, in a deeper way the things of our Lord Jesus Christ, the things that constitute discipleship. And until next time, uh, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious unto you, uh, the Lord, uh, uh, may the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding guard your heart and your spirit in Jesus' name. Shalom. Amen. Amen, amen. This program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayers, inquiry, and partnership, contact us on 0800-000-898 or send a text to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you.